Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Trading Mouse back with some more Alawi gameplay. That's right, we are back. It's been a content drought. Uh, for those who don't know, I've moved. I don't like going out with work, so I took a little break from YouTube. I've been live streaming on Twitch TV, uh, not on YouTube because I've been wanting to use my own music and kind of relax a little bit. But yeah, we're here versus a few are today. I'll be making a, a guide or a video here soon explaining like the changes I've made early on. You see I'm running Doran Shield Health Potion with Grasp of the Undying and some interesting like offerings with Alacrity and Last Stand. Uh, basically just trying to go as aggressive as I can early on and, and start contesting these players who normally would bully me out of the lane. And I actually get a lot of cheeky early early game kills using this strategy. So we're going to see how I, how I can do versus Fiora. Be sure to like to be subscribed to the channel. And of course, check out my live streams right now on Twitch. I need to level 2 here. When you get level 2, I can like get the E. I just want to look for an E between tentacles. Try to bait this, this uh, vital maybe. Ah, okay. She's a little bit quick on that W. And yeah, that's really the mini game of this matchup. I mean, it's just the the my E versus her W. Uh, so much damage. All you need to do though is land one E, and I'll be okay. This is actually a position you can get into where people will start inting basically because you get too low. I also have Dorn Shield healing. Just a bad E. Now that that E really sucks, but if I can just hold this, yep, 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 yep. So we want to hold this here because if we let it crash in, it pushes back to Fiora. If we hold the minions just outside of the uh, turret range, then it holds the wave in the spot for, for another. It basically freezes it, right? Which is what we want. Fiora wants to uh, have all the room in the world to run us down with the vital procs. And we don't want to be out there. Pretty straightforward. Should auto debut that. Now this build does not have any mana in it early. Something mana E. Dang, man. Can't land any on her. Fiora should be hard to land these on, right? Because she can Q, she can uh, W. There's lots of ways to dodge. Now, I, I'm Umi, right? But I can do something called what I the mana trick. So, what basically what happens, I talk about this a lot. I should make a short on it. I probably will soon. If I have 35 mana, I can actually cast Q or uh, W and E. And if I have 45 mana, I can cast Q and W. Because Q, E, and R don't actually take away the mana until they're done casting. You can cast W while you're casting Q or E. So let's say I have 45 mana. I can cast Q at 45 mana. No, it's, yeah, 45 mana. And then I'll still have 45 mana as it's casting. I can use W. I'll get down to 15 mana, roughly. I'll have some mana regen. And then I can, and then after the Q finishes, it'll take the 45 mana away. At which point I only have like 20 mana. So, but it still goes off. Here, I reset. Got Sheen. I'm gonna try to use the Sheen Grass proc to my advantage. Really nice W. He's still going for this. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. Damn. Just keep holding it. Try to stop her from backing, basically. Can't really hold. Oh, baggy. Don't let her get the vital proc on the below. Yep. What I did was really important there. I faked the auto attack on her when I had Sheen Grasp. So I walked up closer. You go back and watch replay. I walked up close to her and I like kind of canceled my auto. And she, because she has to W that auto or she dies. So she Ws. I don't auto attack her. I get the attack speed slow, which is really annoying. It took me a long time to auto attack at the end. But we got the we got the kill. And she wasted flash, which is great. She flashed to try to get that vital to, to save her, but it was too late. Pretty clean so far. We're gonna go for tabbies and then iceborne gauntlet for sure. The build so far this season. Um oh, I'll talk about the starting page, by the way, and in, in the video I make, but the starting page, I mean I've I've really climbed very quickly with it. I've gone from basically uh, this count was, you know, zero LP masters, and I've climbed to 850 LP. It was where I'm hovering right now, and it's very, just very strong. Nice. When she's queuing at one of her vitals, she's usually exposing herself to an E. Some good, feel, really good Fioras will, like, QW those, but most one. It's a tricky way you can land some E's that you normally shouldn't. 
The other way is just to get really close to her so she has less reaction time. Like here. See, I'm getting really close. I'm looking. I'm looking. Keep, just keep grass rocking. Grass sheen plus Qs and tentacle slams. If we can poke her down, that gives us a much safer spot to play into during the all in. Beautiful. I'm just low on mana, so I'm not like spamming my abilities too much. Nice. There, I don't even think I had 130 mana. I had like 112, but again, I did the mana thing where I cast ult, 100 mana, I used W, I went down to like 80 mana. And then at the end of my ult, I took away the 100 mana and put me at pretty low mana, but. Very, very, very nice. Just clean. Just notice like how I'm positioning in these fights. I mean, versus Fiora, a lot of players will make the mistake of fighting out in the open. You should always be hug hugging a wall. Like, one of your, so you have four vital positions, right? Above, right, left, and down. You need to be covering one of those four s spots so she can never proc all four on her ult. And if she gets an unlucky proc in fighting, um, then you block that side. And that really reduces her damage. If you're fighting out in the open of the lane, kind of like where I am right now walking into the lane, like I'm just out in the open, and she need to proc all four vitals all the time, you're going to have a bad time, right? And that's where, that's where people make the mistake of they think, oh, I should buy Bramble Vest. No, you shouldn't. Just just hug the wall. <laughs> like that's all you have to do. You save a thousand gold. You get to your power spikes quicker. You're you're just infinitely better. I would definitely say that uh, Bramble Vest into Fiora is. I would say it's a noob trap. Like it's literally there just to cover up your your bad positioning. Why would I spend a thousand gold when I could just position better, and then I can get more offensive or or get to my item spikes quicker. And just be so much stronger. That's something that Ellis is really big on lately, and I, I completely agree with. Like, people overhype Grievous Wound so much. Usually, if you just get to your first item spike, you're going to do more damage, you're going to have more utility, you're going to be more useful, like, you're going to be more well rounded. And if you can avoid, uh, if you can mitigate healing by just playing better, you should, just, you should do that. She is like, she's tilted now. Like, she, I should never hit those E's. I'm like mid range, which is just fine for her to be able to react with W. She should never hit the. Let me hit those. But I'm like, I kind of know I'm in her head at this point. Ekram's going to aggro, so I'm just going to rotate it over to help out. Jin's coming over too. Tentacle in four. To help Jin out. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Hecarim gets blue buff. What the heck? The Singe? Is Zeus trolling? No way. No way they were up through here. Oh, she is. No, no, no. We just, dude, just get... Junglers are wild. The only downside of this play is that the top lane was not really positioned well for me. I lost like a wave and a half for it. Now, Fiora's going to lose a lot too. You see it all crashing here. But... Oh, the plate. Don't let me lose the plate, please. Oh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. No. Oh. Okay. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. Hecarim's still being aggro in their jungler. In the jungle. Paying off. I, just, I get scared when my jungler is being, like, crazy. Because they're, they're basically coin flipping. And I'd rather just be in lane. Beautifully. Beautiful. Got her on the mid dash. Uh, if I had like Black Cleaver or something, I have enough damage that would do a lot more damage, but. See, I'm hugging the wall here. I'm kind of baiting her to all in me. I'm, my ult wore off, so I'm just going to reset. Yeah, this is a little bit, bit of a mistake. I should have just held. I should have just uh, got through that whole thing, rotation. And even if she. I was kind of afraid she was going to ult me by the way she was playing. And I didn't know if I would like survive till my next E, which is really important. I think I would have, so maybe I should have just I should have just held my ult and let her do that play if she wants. Pretty clean so far. Oh yeah, my build still Ice Spring Gauntlet, and then either Holebreaker or Black Cleaver. Holebreaker got big buffs with the 
one of the recent patches. For 200 more costs, you got 5% move speed and like 10 more AD or something. It's a wild. It was a wild. Look at that bop. I don't have ult here though. It's kind of awkward. I'm trying to try to bop her with Sheen procs. Oh, she got the bottom vital. That sucks. Stay with her. Just W spams. Don't Q here. Q something up first, but don't Q. Just W. Yeah. Q. Q gives her the option to counter play, and it stops your movement, right? So if you Q, she can just Q dash and dodge it. Oh wait, hold on. I can get this. I can get this. Hold on. Oh, they don't know. Oh, behind enemy lines. Look at me go. Like some psyops shit. Let's go. They're mad. And they mad. <laughs> Let's go. 3-0. We're actually tied on CS. We're doing a good job of CSing. Um, yeah, so I go Iceborne Gauntlet, like, my core items are usually Iceborne Gauntlet, Holebreaker, Black Cleaver, Seric Sage. It's a pretty good core. I, I was really hyped for... We're kind of contesting here. She's just... <laughs> they get so, like, focused on dodging your E that they just walk back and forth and you just, like, W-bop them a lot. <laughs> you see, I'm not even throwing E. I'm just trying to... Trying to W-bop her low. If you can just get her low, I mean, it makes your life so much easier. Hey, yo, chill. Yeah, I had high hopes for Trinity Force, but the, it's just... The buffs didn't... Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, and just Q... If she ult... If she W'd on her Q there, I might have... Gotten wrecked. Kind of feel like I need to Rift here soon, though. That E was clean. Can we kill it? I, I mean, I ult here just because I want to like use my rift. Should mm. I should have popped it. Ah, uh, well. I was I, I I was really hoping she was just like all in me, and I would kill her first. But small mistakes, stupid freaking mistakes, man. QE. QE is just like something you can do. You can like Q and then E afterwards, and it kind of like there's so much visual stuff going on that usually don't react to your E very cool, very well. So you can like up your E hit rate. Ooh. I forgot to mention this earlier. I did get a, I do get a tier pretty often, even though I go Doran Shield start. I still get a tier like on one of my early backs. It's basically just 400 gold for me. Never have to worry about mana again. I'm kind of trying to bait between these two tentacles right here. Ooh, big. Cut it out. <gasps> I should have debuted her. Oh, that's whatever. I don't think anyone on my team can rotate up to get the kill. So that's all right. What what the heck? She's back. Oh, elevation diff. Mm, yeah, I'm just not gonna. I actually QW'd there for the mana trick, but. Oh, look at Jin go. Oh my gosh, he's so fast. And teleport back. Let me get the turret here, though. Let me get it to smash into the tier 2. That'd be nice. Turret gold and plate gold and all that is really how you accelerate your champion. It's very important, especially if you can get... Like, the best games are ones where you actually get a tier 2 pretty early. It's, it's just so much gold. If you can get all your plates and 2-2 two, two turret and your enemy doesn't get any plates <laughs> or the turret, oh my gosh. I mean, how do you how do you ever really come back from that? We have Iceborne, so we just use... Like, look how much chaos there is in that. There's so much visual chaos, it's impossible for you to, for you to ever see your E. I mean, I'm fine to 1v2 at this point. Like, Graves Fiora, y'all got nothing on me. Ooh, ooh, let's go. Okay, okay. I live for these. Finish Spirit, yep. Hey. Get behind the minions. I see. Uh oh, Kogamon's here. Oh, but I've got the friends. 
Yes! Oh, I live for those moments. I live. I. Why do I love Alawi? I love 1v3s. I just do. I love outplaying three people. It's just so good. The movement, the chaos, the kills, the tentacles. Beautiful. A reset here. Now, they do have Kog'Maw Lulu, which is uh, pretty spooky. I'm not going to lie. Kog'Maw at this patch was is uh, pretty strong. So... Split burst. We'll just go back top. We're, keep working this tier two. I mean, we got it pretty low again. I would like to kill it to accelerate myself to get Black Cleaver. Ooh. No shot, he lives. Okay, dude. That's a disaster. That actually looks pretty good. Dude, Kogma is seven and three now. Kog'Maw is literally the only thing that can outcarry us in this game. It's a very bot lane focused meta anyway, so we, we typically do lose to like the better bot lane. Your turret has been destroyed. But we'll see what we can do. I, it's going to be pivotal for me to get flash ults with like Debbie's on the Kog'Maw with the uh, Ice Ring outlet. Blocking the right battle here, getting turret. Slow. Baddie. It's okay. My team's kind of rotating up to Rift. It looks like they're all on Rift. I'm gonna try to go for like a flank here. Hopefully my team can just initiate. We can go. I've got Flash Bolt pretty strong. What the? Okay, dude. I thought my team would initiate. What? We still have- oh, Rakan doesn't have R up right now. Man, I think they were waiting for Rakan R. I thought like Hecarim and Rakan would go in, you know? And then it'd be fight me like zoning off of Lulu Cog Fiora, and my team would be able to clean up Singed Graves and then run up to help me out. It works out. It works out. Once they got their ults up, they did alright. All good, all good. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, cool. They redeemed. They redeemed. It was, uh, I guess I, I should have just checked for Rakan R. I think if they have Rakan R there, Hecarim does go in. Because they had Rakan, Aurelian Soul, and Hecarim. All with R's, which is a big combo. And it's very, like, initiation-oriented. So they could have they could have done work, but it's whatever. Just the the pitfalls of Solo Q, I suppose. No voice communication. And no real synergy. Yeah, I was just like, I was expecting them to run in there and... This didn't happen. We get Drake. I mean, ideally here we'd get Drake real quick and then I'd go bot, but Aurelian Soul's gonna go bot to catch, which is fine. I mean, Aurelian Soul scales really well. It can do work. Okay, Hecarim, you just destroyed that player. Cool. Now we're gonna go bot. Work on this tier two. So we want to be bot here macro-wise because we can work on the tier 2 bot, which would be great to, again, accelerate us even further, get more gold, and my team could threaten Baron, but we're just going to fight. Oh my gosh, that really soul. Do we just slow Fiora here? Oops. All right. Nice, just slow, slow, slow. Like, we don't even have the R. Like, we're just so, we're so useful just throwing down Ice from Gauntlet procs. I think my team can do Baron without me, so I'm going to push bot. It's a little bit greedy here, but I can teleport up if shit goes wild. But I'm in Graves' bot, so... They should be able to 3 mana. Again, if I can get this tier 2 bot, if we can get Baron, it's going to really accelerate me much quicker to my next item. It'll likely be Holebreaker, but we'll see, we'll see. What's up, Kog'Maw? Wait, whoa. We got Baron. Nice. Come on, dude. Maybe if I can get a W, I can kill, I think. Woo! Uh-oh. Whatever. We'll just kind of stall out. My team's doing work without them having Kog'Maw. Bro! Where did my... Did I just... <laughs> okay. 
I mean, my team is like the rest of their team. It's kind of silly for Cogman to be bought, I'll be honest, because, uh, I mean, yeah, their team just got initiated on and got rolled because they didn't have Cogman, right? They have Cogman Lulu. That's the whole bit. It's kind of weird that Cogman went bought. Um, I literally died, even though I 10% damage debuffed Cogman by the Iceborne Gauntlet. I died in the time it took me to cast E. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Just Kog'Maw, even though he's an ADC, just doing so much magic damage. And I don't have any magic resist in this build. Not yet, anyways. Once I get Holebreaker, I will. But the cool part here is I can actually go Steric Sage or Holebreaker with the Phage. Steric Sage got buffed. You get Tenacity and uh, Champ Size now, which is kind of nice. So a lot of really nice uh, changes to our a few of our core items recently. Really helping out. I'll just put top here. We don't have Baron buff anymore, which kind of sucks. I shouldn't have taken that 1v1 versus Kog. It was, it was a mistake. Did I just stay on top of her with uh, Ws? I'm going to try to block this right vital. Okay. Jin's going to rotate over. Maybe we can cut her off. We get Vision. Okay. <laughs> cut off her uh, one route of escape. Nice. Good job. Jin's pretty clean, which I like. I like, I like. Push out top. You teleport. Two little 4 1 split. I've got Flash coming up, so I'm kind of big in a, in a fight. Ooh, Graves, you want to you wanna play? Oh, oh! That's so much speed. Oh my goodness. What was that Hecarim? That Hecarim is speed. Very, very good. We still have all our ults, too. As long as all our ults go into Kog'Maw, we're okay. Ooh, I don't know about this. Oh, we got him! Take him out! Okay, we got him. We win, we win. Literally, their whole team is, like, relying on Kog'Maw. That's, I mean, that's all there is to it. And luckily, this composition, we I think they got team comp dip. Our comp has very good initiation tools between Hecarim, uh, Aurelian Soul, and Rakan. And even me with Flashfall, I can get in there and follow up. So, yeah, Kog'Maw's mad. Ah, whatever, dude. You're Kog'Maw Lulu, man. Chill. And, like, the best meta since Ardent sends her meta for it. Nice. Should be a free one here. No! Plus 50 gold. Hey, yo. GG. Hope you enjoyed. It feels good to be back. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see y'all next time.